Welcome back to the Style Academy. This lesson is about a positives. Before I even tell you what an appositive is, let's take a look at an example. Young Harry Potter, the most famous wizard at Hogwarts, used a stitching spell to mend a hole in his sock. This is a pretty silly sentence that I just wrote a moment ago, but I want you to take a look at this part of the sentence. The most famous wizard at Hogwarts. What is it doing here? Well, it's pretty clear that it's renaming what young Harry Potter is. It's giving us more information about him. It's essentially telling us that Harry Potter is the most famous wizard at Hogwarts. Both phrases are referring to the same referent, Harry Potter. What's interesting about that sentence is that it's combining two sentences. If you see here, young Harry Potter used a stitching spell to mend a hole in his sock. He is the most famous wizard at Hogwarts. But you see, this sounds kind of redundant. What we do here is combine the two by using an appositive. The phrase, the most famous wizard at Hogwarts, is the appositive. It is renaming or providing new information to a noun or noun phrase that it sits next to. That's the definition of the word appositive. It's apposite, close to or close by something else. Okay, well, who cares about Harry Potter? Let's take a look at a more academic example, okay? I took this sentence from an article in The New Yorker called Laptop U, written by Nathan Heller. And I want to point out here, in the interest of full disclosure, that I am a sentence hound. I look for good sentences when I do reading, and I keep all of them on a Google document. That makes me a definite nerd, but I do want to recommend that you become a sentence hound too, a sentence hunter. Go look for effective sentences that do interesting things and keep them somewhere. Uh, in previous centuries, this somewhere was called a commonplace book. Okay, so anyway, back to this sentence. I'm not going to read it out loud, but if you take just two or three seconds and read this sentence to yourself. Where is the appositive? Yep, you guessed it. Right there. This phrase, for years the strongest force in for-profit online education, adds something to the University of Phoenix, the subject of the sentence. It adds something by giving us more of a thorough definition of what the University of Phoenix is. It gives us new information about what it is. Uh, and that makes it a positive. So the cool thing about positives is that you can, you have some options as a writer for using them. For example, you could have, or Nathan Heller could have offset his positive with dashes, like I've done here. And maybe that adds a little bit more drama. Maybe it offsets the positive in a way that draws attention to it. But also, uh, Heller could have put the positive at the beginning of the sentence. As long as it's still opposite to the University of Phoenix, this opening phrase works just fine as a positive. And just for kicks, you can kind of see if we put it at the bottom of the sentence, how this doesn't quite work in this case. So a positives function as free modifiers. They can be uh, put uh, in different places in the in the in sentences at the beginning, it can split subjects and verbs. It can go at the end of sentences, but it has to go opposite to the other noun or noun phrase that it is describing, defining, or adding more information to. You can see how these two are separated. Appositives are uh, rhetorical tools that you can use in your writing to become a more effective writer. And now I'd like to show you four different ways of positives can be used. And I'm going to go through these four different ways fairly quickly. So as always, please feel free to pause it if you need to. The first way an appositive can be used is to identify or rename. And usually this is to identify or rename an individual, like in this example from Natalie Angier. You can see how the appositive that, I've, that I have highlighted is giving us more information about Alan Guth. 
And you can also see how you could use this kind of a positive in a research paper to provide more uh, ballast to your argument, to show the authority of an individual that you're citing, quoting, or summarizing. Another way you can use an appositive is to, as to explain or to give examples for information that has come previously. You can see how Oliver Sacks uses an appositive here, and in this case, the appositive is a com it could be function as a complete sentence. It's an independent uh, clause. To explain or to give more examples about lingering memory problems that one of his uh, patients is, is having. Here's another example uh, that's a little bit different. This is another way that an appositive can be used to explain or give an example. The highlighted appositive is providing examples of fresh food in a grocery store, in this example from Michael Pollan. Appositives can also give definitions for key terms in your writing. So here again from Natalie Angier, she is defining the term subatomic particles, and she's offsetting her appositive by dashes. The fourth way you can use an appositive is as kind of a summarizing statement, a summarizing a phrase that helps uh, your readers understand a particular term you're using in your sentence. So here from Isaiah Berlin, we have an Eden from which we were expelled, but for which we were still filled with longing. What is that a positive summarizing? It's summarizing or adding more information about the Garden of Eden before the fall. As you can see that in the uh, clause that comes before. Some people call these resumptive or summative modifiers because they kind of summarize a key term that you've already given in the sentence. Okay, with these four different methods down, I think we're ready to do some exercises. As always, get a pencil, a pen, a piece of paper, a word processing document, whatever you want to use to write. Get them ready for these exercises. But for this first exercise, you're not going to need anything to write with. Just take a look at this sentence from Natalie Angier. There are two appositives hiding in this lovely sentence. And what I want you to do is find both appositives and then decide how they're functioning as appositives. Are they identifying? Are they explaining? Are they defining or are they summarizing? And just a quick hint, one of the appositives is actually a series of phrases offset by commas. So go ahead and pause the video now and find the two appositives and categorize them. All right, so what did you decide? This is how I categorized them. I selected this, uh, what is it? Three, three uh, noun phrases here, the sweet air we breathe, the cool water we drink, the speed bumps we bump over. I picked that as an appositive. And I think that it's providing examples for what Angier is calling the backdrop and foreprop of our lives. So that's, an exp uh, that's I think, is an example appositive. The second appositive in the sentence is more like a definition appositive, isn't it? Uh, Angier is defining what discrete hollow particles are, tri trillions upon quintillions of vacuum-filled atoms, etc. Okay, so the next uh, three slides you're going to see are going to have sentences on them. I want you to combine all the sentences that you see on the screen, making a positives as you go. And if you need a refresher, you may want to go and review the sentence combining um, uh, lesson on the Style Academy. So real quick, and then I'm going to shut up for a while and let you get to work. You see two sentences on the screen, and they're identified as 1.1 and 1.2. Combine these two sentences, making one sentence, and creating an appositive. And you can decide if the appositive goes before the term that it describes or after. Uh, there's, there are going to be two more slides after this one, and the last slide actually has six sentences. And I want you to combine all six into one complete sentence using two appositives in that last slide. Okay, you ready? Go ahead and pause the video at each slide and combine the sentences.
And that concludes our lesson on a positives. Thanks for joining us on the Style Academy today.